Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the People's Health Dispatch. Today we are here uh, with the president of the Turkish Medical Association, Şebnem Korur. Uh, and the Turkish Medical Association has been driving uh, a wave of protests and strikes uh, for almost a year now. Uh, a bit less than a year, uh, and they have been raising issues related to both salaries, but also working conditions and violence in the workplace. Uh, so uh, we are here to talk more to Shevnem and to learn more about what's happening with doctors and other health workers in Turkey. Welcome, Shevnem. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation, actually. Uh, and so just to begin with, uh, you know, uh, very recently there has been uh, a new protest and a new strike Uh, in Turkey, and uh, this was uh, sparked by a recent murder uh, of a cardiologist in center, uh, central Anatolia. And so, of course, uh, the, the Turkish Medical Association, the TMA, uh, has been warning about the rise of violence against health workers uh, for some time. Uh, and uh, but still, we are seeing that you know uh, action from uh, from the policymakers is missing. So uh, to begin with, can you tell us a bit more about uh, how this problem of violence against health workers uh, became so prominent, uh, and also what are some of the solutions that as the association you see and would like to to see happening? Uh, it's a long time since we struggle against this violence at the workplace, particularly the healthcare workers just are subjected to violence uh, and the numbers are escalating uh, recently. Uh, when we just check the numbers of white coats, which means that this is a reporting mechanism of violence at the workplace. Uh, it was around 17,000 uh, in 2019, and it had dropped to around 11,000 in 2020 because of uh, people to the hospitals and healthcare centers have also dropped around 35% in that period because of the COVID-19 cases. Uh, but uh, in 2021, there was a dramatically uh, increased uh, numbers of white coats, uh, which is uh, nearly 30,000. So it has been uh, three times more than uh, the previous year. Uh, what is the reason uh, of this escalation of the uh, cases, violence cases? Uh, if we ask this question, we have to just consider the health policy of the government uh, for 20 years actually, because there was uh, a so-called uh, revolution uh, in the health policy, according to the government, AKP government, but it was actually, unfortunately, a deterioration of the healthcare system in the country because they have just ignored preventive uh, healthcare systems and uh, just shifted all the general practitioners as family physicians while they were uh, just uh, appointed on contract basis and without a regional coverage of uh, these family physicians to their region where they just work in the region, they can have some patients or people from different cities, for example. And if it is not regionally based, then you can't have a preventive medicine uh, practiced in that region properly. And also while they are uh, just appointed as uh, in a contract basis, uh, also they do not have other healthcare professionals who have to work with them. Uh, either they have to hire some healthcare professionals themselves uh, or they have to be alone. But preventive medicine means a work of a team with social workers, nurses, midwives, uh, and uh, the environmental technicians, etc. 
uh, but there is no system in this context. So without any preventive healthcare system, then all the people were forwarded to the hospitals, uh, to the second step of the healthcare system. And uh, then there are too many people uh, just being admitted to the hospitals, while uh, some of these people, actually most of these people tend to use the emergency departments. Uh, last year, the numbers is more than 120 million uh, applications to this emergency departments. It is nonsense. More than the population of the country needs emergent uh, healthcare. It is uh, not the truth, of course, but people use these emergency report departments as outpatient clinics, actually. Uh, so we have to keep in mind that they, in a way, provoked a demand for healthcare system. Uh, I wouldn't call this a solicitation, a milder word for this. This is a provocation. So with this provocation, people, uh, when they cannot find a solution for their healthcare problems, then uh, meet with the healthcare professionals in front of them. They do not consider the Ministry of Health, they do not consider the health authorities and the political authorities of the country, but they just uh, feel the anger against the healthcare professionals, against the physicians, unfortunately, then the violence escalates in this kind of a, a healthcare system. So this is the problem of the healthcare system in the country, which they have called a revolution, but it was a deterioration of the system actually. And we have to keep in mind that we cannot prevent violence with some uh, security measures, actually. Uh, we have to uh, just think broader than security measures, broader than uh, some legal reforms or amendments in the law. Uh, so uh, there are serious problems. We have to change the health policies. We have to uh, just prioritize the preventive health care and build uh, preventive healthcare centers with a big team uh, preventing illnesses and uh, protecting environments. Uh, so uh, in order to prevent people to be ill at the end. And of course, the violence is not the only problem that the health workers are facing right now. The, the Turkish Medical Association actually has been uh, organizing uh, quite, so it has organized a number of strikes, a number of protests uh, since 2021. Uh, and this is also related uh, to the very low salaries that we, uh, you are seeing in the health sector, but also to the inflation that we know that the country has been going through. Uh, so uh, could you tell us a bit more about how uh, working conditions in the sector are currently looking like and uh, what is the, the medical association actually pushing to do? Unfortunately, the workload is also increasing in the last years. Uh, because of this provocation of demand for healthcare system. Uh, and this workload, uh, in a way, uh, was just accepted by the healthcare professionals because uh, their low salaries were compensated by performance payments. But these performance payments were unstable uh, and uh, they never knew whether they would just earn the same amount up on the upcoming months or so. So uh, this uh, obscure situation uh, was the reason of anxiety for the healthcare professionals. Uh, and also they considered the situation, the workload, uh, as they're being uh, uh, 
devaluated uh, in the system. Uh, this was probably the target of the government to devaluate the healthcare professionals. Uh, instead of being the subjects of the healthcare system, uh, just uh, providing healthcare to people and uh, having the rights, then when they devaluate the health professionals, they are just uh, turned to objects without any rights at all, even without being called human beings anymore. Uh, so uh, in this context, uh, with the salaries uh, lowering all the time and the inflation uh, just rising uh, constantly, uh, they just became uh, poor and poor uh, in those uh, years. And uh, of course, uh, this situation, hardworking uh, and also uh, very uh, qualitative healthcare uh, providing didn't make them earn more in the system. They had to just have the quality, uh, quantity in front of quality because of the performance, uh, performance uh, payments. Uh, then uh, they were unhappy. Uh, they were too tired. They were uh, worried about their future. And this caused a burnout for all the healthcare professionals at the end. And uh, we had to just struggle for our rights as a medical association, as a professional organization. But of course, uh, struggling for the rights cannot be alone for the professional organization. So we just joined forces with all the unions and all professional uh, organizations of the uh, on health care system with nurses, with uh, dentists, with veterinary uh, physicians, etc. And all these uh, groups also joined uh, to this uh, struggle uh, and we had several different types of protests for example marching from istanbul to ankara stopping every few cities and uh, protesting there having demonstrations and also trying to make uh, the public join us uh, because they also have a serious problem uh, of uh, access to healthcare uh, because of this burnout. Uh, physicians, for example, uh, physicians either resign uh, or try to uh, travel abroad for better conditions. So in many cities, uh, there are lack of uh, some specialties. Uh, we do not have hand surgeons in some cities, for example. The pathology department of a city is closed because there is no uh, body in <coughs> that department. So this means that we have to raise our voice and make it heard by the authorities. Is it hurt? A bit. Because they have to at least promise that they will uh, just promote the situation. But we didn't see any result yet. So we continue to struggle uh, and we are decided to continue the struggle till we can have all our rights. But it is not easy, we know, because the health policy have to change, the health system, the healthcare system have to be changed and also the economic system had to be changed at the end. Uh, you also mentioned something that I wanted to ask for the end, uh, actually referring to the many, many health workers who have been leaving Turkey because of the worsening uh, conditions in, uh, in the health sector. 
And I believe that the latest number that you came out with was uh, more than 700 physicians leaving, the, uh, leaving Turkey uh, in 2022 alone. So you know, I, I'm sure that, and you explained so well uh, what kind of impact this had on the care that was provided. Uh, and I just wanted to ask, is there any, um, you know, any sight of this trend ending or being stopped by some, some things happening in the health system? Not at all. Uh, and the number was 1,171 at the end of June. So the first half is more than 1,000. It was 1,405 uh, in 2021. So uh, this trend would not end. Uh, it is not only the healthcare professionals, it is not only the physicians, actually well-educated people uh, try to uh, leave the country uh, because they consider that they are devaluated. Uh, this is the problem. Uh, educated people are devaluated by the government and many people are criminalized by the government. Uh, particularly the healthcare workers, healthcare professionals are uh, criminalized recently together with their professional organizations and unions because we struggle for our rights, which is a common uh, situation. Uh, how can we just uh, sit silently and accept our fate? Uh, this is not a fate. Uh, this is the policy that they force us uh, just to accumulate, uh, accommodate ourselves, but we cannot accommodate ourselves with such kind of slavery conditions. Uh, so, uh, Many physicians try to leave the country, but not only this situation, also uh, just recently, the results of the uh, university entrance examinations have been announced. And I can see on the social media that uh, many of the physicians uh, ask uh, these young people not to uh, choose uh, medical faculties uh, because the conditions are so harsh uh, for them. So they are not only leaving, but also we are not sure about our future, whether people would like to be physicians or not. Even if being a physician is taking care of another person uh, before yourself, uh, it is not an easy situation if you are also devaluated for just uh, sacrificing your life, sacrificing uh, your ambitions uh, for working in a condition which the working is too hard, too long, and without any uh, payment for your work for your labor. Uh, so the situation for the uh, future is not so enlightening and bright at all. Thank you for sharing that. And of course, you know, uh, we at uh, the People's Health Dispatch will continue to follow the, the work of the Turkish Medical Association. And, you know, we do hope that uh, the actions that you do will get so much traction that actually the government is pushed to act. Uh, and um, Thank you for being our voice and also hope we will talk on how the improvements are just moving forward.